Hey guys, this is Joe Tech from Joe Tech Tips, the CCNA video series. We are on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're going to be working on 3.2.4.6. Packet Tracer, investigating the TCP, IP, and OSI model in action. This is actually a rather lengthy um, activity. Um, this is just letting you or get letting you get the the feel of the packet tracer and how you can capture certain protocols within the packet tracer program, which I find interesting. However, um, it's rather sometimes it can be complex. So this activity we're going to be doing is trying to understand how to navigate through the simulation of it. If you notice in here, you have we've been normally working with the real-time environment where we have the two devices, the web client, and the web server, and that's normal. However, there is another one here, and this is called simulation mode. And this allows us to simulate uh, network traffic. And this packet tracer will capture whatever we send through it, and then we can investigate that traffic and look at it and see what part of the ISO model it is, and so on and so forth. So that's what this exercise or activity will do for us. So without further ado, let's get started. Objectives. Part 1. Examine HTTP web traffic. Part 2. Display elements of the TCP IP protocol suite. Background. This simulation activity is intended to provide a foundation for understanding the TCP IP protocol suite and the relationship the OSI model. Simulation mode allows you to view the data contents being sent across the network at each layer. As data moves through the network, it is broken down into smaller pieces and identified so that the pieces can be put together when they arrive at the destination. Each piece is assigned a specific name, protocol data unit or PDU, and associated and associated with a specific layer of the TCP IP and OSI models. Packet Tracer Simulation Mode enables you to view each of the layers and the associated PDU. The following steps lead the user through the process of requesting a web page from a web server by using the web browser application available on the client PC. Now, this is this is pretty interesting. You, you'll get, <laughs> you kind of, eventually you'll get the hang of it. I'm not sure how often you'll be using this because really your <laughs> packet tracer program is uh, very useful in in um, real time mode rather than simulation. But it's here. I'm being honest, <laughs> this, which, which is what I like to do. Um, so let's continue. Even though much of the information displayed will be discussed in a mold in more detail later, this is an opportunity to opportunity to explore the functionality of the packet tracer and be able to visualize the encapsulation process now that's what I said before before I even read that and that's really interesting because this program will actually do that for us it will actually let us view the packets and whatever we decide to you know capture at the moment so let's continue part one examine HTTP web traffic in part one of this activity, you'll, you will use Packet Tracer PT simulation mode to generate web traffic and examine HTTP. Step one, switch from real time to simulation mode, which is what I, we did when I first started this. So it's pretty much just clicking on these two tabs here. They're right in the right hand corner and you go to simulation mode and then this new window pops up here. Okay. In the, lower, in the lower right corner of the Packet Tracer interface are tabs to toggle between real-time and simulation mode. PT always starts in real-time mode. 
remember that, in which networking protocols operate in realistic timings. However, a powerful feature of Packet Trace allows the user to stop time by switching to simulation mode. In simulation mode, packets are displayed as animated envelopes. Time is event driven and the user can step through network in networking events. So so what we need to do first, so let's let's continue rather. Even though it seems complicated, it actually is. <laughs> so, let's move along because this is kind of step 1 part B. Um we're currently in simulation mode, so now select HTTP from the event list filters. Now, this is the part that gets a little funky because it's not listed. So, let's go and look for it. So, we have to go. It says to do show all. This is actually a bug in the program because the information that is listed here for you to do is incorrect. So, follow along with me. So, what we want to do is show all. We click on the show all none button, okay? And then we go to edit filters. And then on the top here, you'll have IP, IP version 4, IP version 6, and miscellaneous. So what we can do is, just so you can see what they all look like when they're assigned, okay? So click off of this and show none. Edit filters. Go to miscellaneous. Doesn't say it there. Pain in neck, it should, and click off HTTP, and then just click anywhere else after that. Then we'll be showing HTTP. It doesn't say to do that here, so that's like terrible. They need to modify this instructions because it's saying toggle the show all none checkbox, and notice how the checkboxes switch from unchecked to checked, or checked to unchecked depending on the current state. It doesn't tell you to click through those other tabs click the show all non checkbox and until all boxes are cleared and then select HTTP it doesn't say to click on so if I did that if I went to edit filters it doesn't say to go to the miscellaneous tab where do you see it there because they're assuming you clicked and, and then select HTTP if you just saw IP version 4 you would not see HTTP so you would need to know to go to miscellaneous tab and then select that terrible bug <laughs> in the in the instructions that make everybody go nuts and go I don't know what I'm doing and then it get you all pissed off and you're not going to get a, you're not going to understand it and so anyway let's move on <clears throat> step 2 generate web http traffic http traffic currently the simulation panel is empty there are six columns listed across the top of the event list take a look vis time in seconds, last device, at device, type, and in info. See it up here? Okay. As traffic is generated and stepped through, events appear in the list. The info column is used to inspect the contents of the particular event. Note, the web server and web client are displayed in the left pane. The panels can be adjusted in size by hovering next to the scrolling bar and dragging left or right when double head arrows appear. Click web client on the far left pane. All right, so now this bad boy pops up. So you want to go to desktop, go to the web browser, and then enter in. We're just going to move this. We'll make this smaller because we don't need this this big. Put that right there. And then we enter in that website. So it's www.osi.local. And hit go. All right. So now, because, the time, because we're in the time simulation mode, each, uh, each event is different. So we need to capture forward. And we'll hit this. It recommends us to hit this four times. So hit one, two, three, four. So now you can clearly see the web traffic here, how it's being sent from the web client to the web server and grabbing the information and sending it back to the client. So it's going to the server, then 
from the from the request, and then go and then it goes back to the client. So, so now what it wants us to do is explore the contents of the HTTP packet. Click the first colored square. Ooh, now this is getting this is getting detailed. <laughs> Gotta love it. Okay. Oh, I moved it in here. Pull this out. Okay. So now, <clears throat> explore. Uh, click the first color square box under the uh, event list info column. It may be necessary to explain the simulation panel because it may be like what happened just a moment ago. It was like it got stuck in there. So see how it changes? It'll put it in there. So we really don't want to do that. It's easier to read when it's out of the Packet Tracer program to actually view it. The PDU information at device web client window displays. In this window, there are only two tabs, ISO model and the outbound PDU dis details. So these are the two tabs that they're talking about. Because this is the start of the transmission, as more events are examined, there will be three tabs displayed, adding a tab for inbound PD, PDU details. When an event is, is the last event in the stream of traffic, only the ISO model and the inbound PDU detail tabs are displayed. Ensure that the ISO model tab is selected under the out layers column and ensure that layer seven box is highlighted, which it is. You can click on any one of these and you can read what it's all about. See, the HTTP client sends an HTTP request to the server. Now, this, this, the ISO model, there's seven layers in the ISO model, and this program, Packet Tracer, pretty much dissects each layer. So then you know what device or what application is actually going through or protocol, what layer it's going to. It's actually pretty neat. But I'm not sure how often you're going to use this. I mean, it's just good to know that it's here. So if you ever wanted to simulate something, say, say for argument's sake, you built a, a network for your house, which I've done. I'll have to show you one day. And uh, you're curious on how the traffic is sent. You can use this to find out what layer it's being used if you needed to go in that detail. So let's continue. Ensure that the ISO model tab is selected. What? is the text displayed next to the layer 7 la layer label http what information is listed in the numbered steps direct uh, directly below in the layer and out layer boxes so we have in layer and it says this click the outbound pdu details tab so this is this is kind of overwhelming because there's a lot of data here, and it's just pretty much showing you what you have the destination MAC, the source MAC address, um, then you have the IP, and all the this is like 31 bit. I mean, I don't want to get into details with this because we're too early in in the in the chapters, but you'll understand all these there's certain information within each bit of the packet a zero through four you have this information you have the time to live then you have um, the, the, the source ip address you have the destination ip address you have tons of data within these packets it tells every packet it tells it where to go because it has to be intelligent somehow how does it go how does you have all these computers on one side of the network how does it know to send that data to that particular device the ISO model. That's how it's done. It's interesting to, to have this information. Um, so what we can continue with this. It gets quite detailed. I don't really want to make this um, as long as uh, it, this will be very lengthy and um, probably not useful <laughs> because we're just trying to. You just trying to. You could what you could do is pretty much just play around with this. So we say for argument's sake, we click on the next one. And we can see this. So there, it says this device takes out the frame of the, the frame buffer and sends it. Fast Ethernet zero sends out the frame. So this is on layer one. So we went from layer seven to layer one. Then in layers, out layers. So now we're this is the web client, 
it gives you all the information what it's actually doing and then then we go to the the next in layer it's just interesting i i guess some people would love this more so what you can do is you can continue with this exercise if you wish and play around because pretty much this is what this is about it's just to understand certain things and about the iso model and understanding each layer the out layer the in layer like i said i don't want to make this extremely long video because you'll end up closing out of it <laughs> which i'm familiar with so this this will end this video um if you like this video please thumbs up if you're not a subscriber please subscribe and we'll be going to our next um we will be going to our next activity, which will be explore a network, uh, packet tracer 3.3.3.3. That's coming, coming next. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.